Hello friend, I'm Juliana Michaels and I'm so happy to have you joining me. In this video, I'm going to be sharing how to use Stencils Distress Ink and the new Distress Texture Paste Sparkle to create a trio of backgrounds that will get you ready for fall, Halloween, and Christmas. The possibilities with this technique are endless. All you have to do is switch out the stencils and colors to fit your style or the theme of your card, and the end results are magical. If you're interested in the products I'm using, you can find them linked in the description box below. When you shop through those links, it helps support me and I really appreciate that more than you know. There is also a blog post with more photos and written instructions that you can find linked below as well. Now let's get on with the making. For this technique, I'm going to be working with stencils. I'll be using the Autumn, Crossbones, and Pinecones layering stencils from Tim Holtz, but you can use any stencil you like. And I'm also going to be using Distress Texture Paste Sparkle. The other thing you'll need are some Distress Inks. I'm going to be using Black Soot, Forest Moss, Gathered Twigs, Iced Spruce, Tea Dye, and Dried Marigold. And I'm going to be using some blending brushes, and you might want some mint tape for masking. And I'll be working on Distress Watercolor Paper cut to 4 by 5 and a quarter inches. The surface I'm working on is the Scrapbook.com 12 by 12 Project Grip Mat, which is a double-sided silicone mat. And I like that it can help hold the stencils and paper in place and make cleanup nice and easy. So to get started, I'm going to use the Crossbone Stencil. And I'm going to center it on the paper because I want the design to go across the paper. I'm going to use black soot distress ink and I'm going to use a blending brush to apply the color. The grip mat is great for helping hold the paper and stencil in place as I mentioned but it also helps hold the ink pad still as you rub your blending brush into it. I'm going to continue applying ink until the design is filled in but I'm not really going to worry about how much I get into the center of the paper because I'm going to cover that up later on when I add my embellishments. As I mentioned, I want the design to go all the way across the paper, so I'm going to shift the stencil over, line it up with the previously stenciled areas, and then add some more ink. And then I repeat the stenciling on the other side of the paper. Once I'm done with the stenciling, I peel up the stencil and set it to the side to clean because I'm going to be using it again. I'm also going to clean off the craft mat before moving on to the next background. For this background, I'm going to use the pinecone stencil. And I'll be using forest moss and gathered twigs distress ink. Here I'm positioning the stencil on the left hand side of the paper, making sure the design reaches to the edges of the paper. And I'm making sure to push it down so it sticks to the mat. I then take a blending brush and begin to apply the Gathered Twigs ink to the pinecone areas on the stencil. I then take Forest Moss and use a blending brush to apply that ink color to the pine needle areas. I'm going to be shifting this stencil so that I can get the design around the outer edge of the paper, so that's why I'm not inking all of the sections on the stencil. I then peel up the stencil and flip it around and angle it just a little bit to fit in the already stenciled areas. And I'm going to use some mint tape here to mask off some sections that I don't want to ink over from the previously stenciled areas. I then begin to apply Gathered Twigs Distress Ink to the pine cones. And then I move on and apply Forest Moss to the pine needles. And there we go. Except that I don't like that area that has no ink. So I'm going to reposition the stencil and move the tape so that I can add some ink to that area. It's a pine cone, so I'm just going to add a little gathered twigs. And yep, that'll work. As before, I'm going to wash the stencil to use for the next step, and then clean off my craft mat before going on to the next background. Now onto the third one, and here I'm using the autumn stencil. The distress inks I'm using are iced spruce, dried marigold, and tea dye. I'm going to start with the iced spruce, and I'm applying it to the oak leaves on the stencil. I'm going to reuse the brush that I used with the gathered twigs for this color. So now I'm just wiping it off onto a paper towel and then I'm going to use it to apply the tea dye to the twig or branch shape. Next, I'm going to use dried marigold and apply it to the maple leaves. As you can see, I'm just doing the outer edge of the stencil. 
If you get some overlapping color, you can always go back over that section and add more of the original color. Now I'm going to flip the stencil around, and I probably should have masked off that little area there when I was adding the ink earlier. I'm going to use some mint tape now to mask off this area here. I then repeat adding the various ink colors to the leaves on the stencil. I'm going to move this piece of tape over just a little bit so I can get some ink on that splatter area better. I then wash the stencil and wipe down my craft mat before moving on to the next step. Now it's time to add some magic to these backgrounds. I'm going to be using the stencils again, and here I'm lining up the crossbone stencil with the design I created earlier using the Distress Ink. Take your time to get it lined up perfectly with the ink design. Once the stencil is in place, I'm going to use a palette knife to apply Distress Texture Paste Sparkle. This paste has a glitter floating in it, and the glitter can catch on things, so I recommend using a palette knife to apply it. A squeegee can force the glitter down to the bottom part of the stencil. As you apply the paste, you want to just kind of skim over the stencil and try to do just one layer. The more you work it, the more the glitter can build up in a section, which isn't the end of the world, but if you notice more glitter in an area, that's probably what happened. I've also found that if you keep working it, the paste will start to reactivate the ink and you can pick up some color on the paste. So make sure you take a peek at the paste that is left on your palette knife before you wipe the excess back into the jar. So I've got the sparkle paste applied to the stencil and I'm going to peel this off and clean the stencil immediately while the paste is still wet. You can also place it in a container of water and wash it off later. I'm now going to set this to the side to dry and then I'm going to come back and do the paste on the sides. The paste is water-based, so you can clean it off your craft mat and palette knife while it's still wet with a damp rag or paper towel. Now I'm going to repeat this same process with a pine cone stencil. Once I get the stencil lined up, I'm going to use some mint tape to mask off some of the areas so I don't get paste on that area that wasn't inked. I'm then going to just go about applying the paste as before. And here I'm checking the palette knife to make sure that no color was picked up as I applied the paste. And since it still looks white, I'm going to return the excess to the jar. I then left off the stencil, put it into the water to wash later, set the paper to the side to dry, and then I'm clean up off my craft mat and palette knife before the paste dries. As you can see, after you apply the paste, it's kind of a milky white, and you can't even see the glitter. But once it dries, believe me, that's when you will be able to see the magical sparkle from the glitter. Here I'm moving on to the third background using the autumn stencil. I'm going to use the mint tape, so I'm going to use the mint tape to mask off a couple of the areas. And I'll admit the larger open areas on this one were a challenge to work with. As I tried to wipe the paste over the maple leaves, the palette knife wanted to drag and pull the paste with it. I do wonder if a longer palette knife might have worked better. Definitely something I'll have to try next time. Once I got the paste applied to the one side, I removed the stencil, placed it in the water, and then set the paper to the side to dry. Here's a look at the completed stencil and sparkle paste backgrounds. The sparkle and shine is just gorgeous and really makes the colors from the stenciling pop. After the first paste application had dried, I applied more paste to the rest of the design and let them dry. Now this paste is a bit slow to dry, especially if you live in a more humid environment. They don't recommend using a heat tool to speed up the drying process though, as it could cause the paste to bubble. I did experiment with using a mink foiling machine to speed up the drying. I just turned it on to level three and laid the papers on top of it. And this seemed to really decrease the drying time by about half and the paste didn't bubble. So if you happen to have something like this, you might want to try it and see if it will help speed up the drying process for you. The next thing we're going to do is add some interest to these backgrounds by adding some Distress Mica stains. I just picked out a few colors here and I'm only going to use one color for each background. But before you use them, you want to make sure you shake them up really well and get that mica mixed in. You want to get that mixing ball going and shake them until the mica is really mixed in before you begin spraying. This will help prevent the spray nozzle from getting clogged. Here I'm just checking to see whether the mica has mixed in or not. You want to keep shaking them until you can't see any more mica clumps 
on the bottom of the bottle. I'm going to be working in a splat box with some paper towels placed inside to absorb the excess ink and to protect my workspace. The first one I'm going to spray on is the crossbones background and the mica stain color I'm using is Empty Tomb. You can spray the paper with water first or you can spray the ink first. I like to spray the ink first and then just spray it here and there and then add a little water with my Distress Sprayer to get the ink moving around. And then you can use a heat tool to help dry the ink. Just make sure that you keep the heat tool moving around because it will heat the paste and it could cause it to bubble if you overheat it. Here I'm tilting the paper to get rid of some of the excess ink so that I don't have a big runny drip down the side of the paper. If you do want to dab off some of the excess ink with a rag or paper towel, just make sure to let the paper cool off for a second or the paper towel will stick to the paste because it does get sticky when the heat is being applied. You can also add some more water droplets by slowly squeezing the trigger on the Distress Sprayer. Like I mentioned, the water will cause the ink to activate and flow and then you can start the drying process with a heat tool. Then let it cool off a second and then you can use a paper towel or a rag to dab up those larger droplets and lift off some of the ink, which just adds a little more interest and texture. Next up is the pine cones background. Oh, and before you move on, make sure you wipe off the nozzle to help prevent clogging. So on this next one, I'm gonna use specimen mica stain. Again, make sure you mix it well before you begin spraying the ink. Then I'm gonna add some water and a little more ink and then a little more water, and then start drying it with my heat tool. This color is so cool. It looks like a muddy brown mess when you first spray it on, but as it begins to dry, it transforms into this gorgeous dark green color. Here I'm just adding some more droplets of water, then drying it again to start the drying, and then I'm gonna give it a second to cool and then dab off the excess ink with a paper towel and then dry it a little more to finish drying the paper. So we're not done with these just yet though. Just need to get the ink sprayed onto this last one. On this autumn stencil background, I'm gonna spray it with frosted juniper. Again, just make sure that the spray stain is well mixed and then spray it on. Then add some water and then dry with the heat tool. Here I'm adding some splatters and then drying it again. I then let it cool and use a paper towel to dab off the excess ink. The backgrounds look pretty cool, but you may be thinking what happened to our sparkle paste? Well, I'm gonna show you. Grab a clean paper towel or a rag and lightly mist it with some water so that it's just a little bit damp and then take that and rub over the top of the pasted areas so that you can remove the mica stain that was covering the sparkle paste and watch the sparkle and design return. As you move on to the next background, make sure to use a clean area on your paper towel so that you don't accidentally wipe a color onto an area that you might not want it. On this last one, you're really gonna be able to see the difference because of how the spray stain was sticking on those larger maple leaf areas. You may need to kind of scrub it a little on them as well. The stain is not gonna dry on the paste, so you do wanna to try to get it all wiped off. So there's a look at the finished background. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm gonna be putting something in the middle, so that's why I didn't worry about what happened on the middle of any of these backgrounds. And here you can see a little bit of a splooge I had with the paste, but I'm just gonna roll with it. Now that the backgrounds are all done, I'm gonna take this Cozy Autumn wreath die cut, which was specifically created by scrapbook.com for SBC Fest. And it's a freebie for a very short period of time right now with any order from scrapbook.com. So run over and grab yours while you can. I took that die and used it with these three different paper pads and I die cut it three times out of three different papers from each paper pad. Here's a Halloween wreath using the spooky paper pad 
and I used the Noel paper pad to create a Christmas wreath and then did the same thing with the Cozy paper pad for a fall wreath. Each time you cut out the wreath, you'll have these leftover circles and you can take the one that you want to use and place it inside this die and use some mint tape to hold it in place and run it through your die cutting machine and it will emboss this and it will emboss this design on it. You can also just cut and emboss a whole nother sheet of paper if you'd like. And then I'm going to use these extra pieces that were left over to build up the center when I assemble these. So I've assembled the wreaths and adhered them to the backgrounds and I'm going to add a sentiment. And what I've done for each card is die cut the sentiment twice from white, heavy white cardstock, and then once using some gold paper from the holographic paper pad. And I'm going to use artiste glue to adhere the layers together. The precision tip on this really comes in so handy for applying adhesive to these delicate thin die cuts. I'm adhering all of these layers together to create a little dimension with the sentiment, but you could certainly just cut and adhere the gold layer to save some time. But you could certainly just cut and adhere the gold layer to save some time. Once the layers are adhered, I then attach the sentiment to the center of the wreath. Here's a look at the completed trio of cards. For each card, I adhered the stencil background to a piece of paper from the paper pad that I used to cut the wreath layers from. I then finished off each card by adding a bow using some twine from my stash. And there you have it, a trio of cards to take you from Halloween to Christmas with a touch of sparkle and shine. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much, and it would mean so much to me to have your support.